Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our sit-ups, our spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I am Tony Burke Brown coming with our spiritual nourishment for today. So welcome as we get together and get our pens, our paper, our highlighters and Bibles get together so that you can take notes and go back and do your own study after we have completed this one. We are going through the book of Genesis. We are in chapter 23. And if you are reminded and remember, listen, sit-ups is an acronym for spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. We've already done our prayer this morning. If you've not yet joined us for our Monday through Friday 6 a.m. prayer, please check out the information underneath this YouTube video. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell if you want to be notified when I upload videos. So we are working out. We are growing, changing, and progressing in the word of God so that we can be impacted by the word and we can impact the world. And so we want to just rejoice and thank God for spiritual nourishment. The Bible says, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so we know that we live by this word. As we are walking in this word, we are growing. We are Our faith is increasing. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. We know the word is like fire shut up in your bones. If you have this word dwelling in you richly, if you hide the word in your heart that you might not sin against the Lord, listen, this word is power. It is a weapon of mass destruction. And so we're going to get ready to go right into the word. Again, we have been doing this this uh, study recently in the book of Genesis. And so we are in chapter 23. If you've missed the previous chapters, please go back to my YouTube channel after this and go and uh, meditate on and play the replay and get the lessons from Genesis 1 through Genesis 22, because we're in Genesis 23. So again, get your pen, get your paper, get your Bibles, get your highlighter so you can take notes because you have to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So get your Bibles and let's go to chapter 23. We are reading from the King James initially. I may reference some other versions, but we are beginning in verse 1. Father, in the name of Jesus, we rejoice in you and bless your name. We thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is truth, that your word prevails, that your word never changes, and that we can stand on your word and apply it to our life and be perfected, be cleansed from the inside out, that our minds are being renewed, that we are able to share this word. Father, that men and women and children, Lord God, will be drawn to your Christ and want to know what must they do to be saved. So, Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit as our teacher would take over and minister to us individually and collectively at our point of need, our level of understanding that we would grow, change, and progress, that your word would impact us and we would apply it. And so, Father, we thank you, praise, love, and honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's open up our Bibles. Genesis 23, verse 1 is where we're beginning. And please remember the previous chapter, after uh, after Abraham and Sarah waited 25 years for the promised child, once he was growing God tells Abraham to offer his son as a burnt offering. Isaac, I mean, Abraham goes through all of the motions and he takes Isaac with them. They go up to the mountain. He is prepared to slay his son. He has strapped him and put him on the altar. He has gone through the three-day journey. He's done it all. But because he was willing to give up his son, because he would not withhold his son from the Lord, the angel of the Lord came and told him, don't touch your son. Don't kill him. And there was a ram in the bush. God had already provided his own sacrifice. And so we talked about, you know, the promise. We talked about the, the willingness to be able to give up whatever we need to give up to do what God tells us to do and not to withhold anything from him because he withholds nothing, no good thing from those that trust him, walk with him, obey him. And so listen, from there, um, we are going into chapter 23 and it reads in verse one, when Sarah was 127 years old, the King James says Sarah was 107 and 20 years old. These were the years of the life of Sarah and Sarah died in Kerjatharwal. The same is Hebron in the land of Canaan and Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. And Abraham stood up from before his dead and spake unto the sons of Heth, saying, I'm a stranger and a sojourner with you. 
Give me a possession of a burying place with you that I may bury my dead out of my sight. And the children of Heth answered Abraham, saying unto him, Hear us, my Lord, thou art a mighty prince among us. In the choice of our sepulchres, bury thy dead. None of us shall withhold from thee his sepulchre, but that thou mayest bury thy dead. So, first of all, now we know that Isaac is 37 because Sarah was 90 when she had him. She's 127 and this is the time that she dies. And so she has had the opportunity to raise her son at an old age and to see him grow into a man. And so now she dies at the age of 127. And then Abraham, you know, is mourning and weeping for her. And this time, you know, it was um, one of their things that, you know, it was so important the way you grieve, the way you mourn your loved ones, your family members. And so uh, he mourned and he wept. And, you know, as we read through the Bible, even in the New Testament, when it talks about those that were weeping and crying, and, and so it would oftentimes be loud. It would be something that others could hear that weren't even necessarily in your circle. And so um, at this time, he is weeping, he's mourning, but then he leaves her body and he goes to the Hittite elders. And so remember, you know, he is a sojourner there. Remember, he's a stranger in the land, a foreigner. And but this is the land that God has promised his descendants, told him his descendants, descendants would take the land and have it, the land of Canaan. And so here is Abraham, not a resident, so to speak. Um, but more of an alien, a stranger, a, a alien, a stranger, and a foreigner. But he asked them, he says, please sell me a piece of land so I can give my wife a proper burial. And the Hittites, they reply to him and, and they say, listen, my Lord, now listen, they are honoring him. He doesn't, he's not a part of their culture, but he was a wealthy man. He was a man of God. Uh, he served God. God blessed him and everybody knew it. And so this is the thing is that oftentimes, even though we may not fit in with a group of people, we not, may not blend in with their beliefs and, and fit in with their, um, with their uh, lifestyles, right? But the thing is, is that when we serve God, when we are people of God, when we are trusting in God, when we are walking in obedience to God, People recognize, and God is the one that gives us favor. You know, oftentimes people think favor comes from, you know, if I'm so nice to them, if I do this for this person, or people like me, they'll do this for me, they'll do that for me, they'll help me here. But truly, favor comes from God. God is the one that promotes. God is the one that gives favor. Sure, you can do something kind for somebody or try to fit in with a crowd and temporarily see that they're going to help you or do something for you or they like you. But at the end of the day, you will notice that oftentimes people will like you today and hate you tomorrow. They'll do something for you one minute and then they won't the next. They'll like you as long as you're doing the things they want you to do. But the moment that you begin to be who you ought to be or you are not able to help them or do what they want you to do or live the way they want you to live, they don't like you. They turn away from you. They abandon you. So the thing is, is that we have to remember favor truly comes from God. You know, he gives us favor with himself and with man. Statue. He is the one that increases us, promotes. He is the one that opens supernatural doors. So because Abraham trusted God, because he was chosen of God, because he had faith in God and his word, people honored him here, right? And so they even call him Lord. So what they're saying is, listen, Lord, my Lord, you're an honored prince among us, an honored prince. This is what having a relationship with God does. It gives us favor, position, right? And it says, you are an honored prince among us. Choose the finest of our tombs or our sepulchers and bury your wife, bury your family, bury your loved one there. No one's going to refuse to help you in this way. So they're telling them, listen, you, you are honored among us. And so you pick the best, bury your loved one there, bury your wife there. Nobody is going to come against you. Nobody's going to refuse you. And so then when we look in, in verse seven, it says, Abraham stood up and bowed himself to the people of the land, even to the children of Heth, And he communed with them saying, if it be your mind that I should bury my dead out of my sight, Hear me and entreat from me 
to Ephraim, the son of Zoar, that he might give me the cave of Machpelah, which he had, which is at the end of this field. For as much money as it is worth, he shall give it me for a possession of a burying place amongst you. So he's saying, listen, if you want to really help me out, right? If you really want to be, you know, uh, if you really want to be kind to me, he says, if you're willing to help me, he says, listen, go ask Ephraim, the son of Zohar, to let me buy his cave. He says, down at the end of the field, I'll pay the full price, he's letting them know. And so he's saying, I want it to be a permanent burial place for my family. This is what he is saying in verse 9. He says that he would give me the cave of Machpelah, which, he had, which is at the end of the field. For as much money as it's worth, he shall give it me a possession of a burying place amongst you. So he wants this to be a burying place for he and his family. And remember, God has given him Canaan. And so this is a place that is promised to his descendants, but it's not yet his. And so as we look through the word of God and we see uh, in the next verse of scripture, what it says in verse 10 is Ephraim dwelt among the children of Heth. And Ephraim the Hittite answered Abraham in the audience of the children of Heth, even of all that went in at the gate of his city saying, Nay, my Lord, hear me. The field give I thee and the cave that is therein I give it thee. In the presence of the sons of my people give I it thee. Give I it thee. Bury your dead. He's saying, you don't have to pay for it. I'll give it to you. In, in the presence of these witnesses, I will give it to you. And in verse 12, Abraham bowed down himself before the people of the land. And he spoke unto Ephraim in the audience of the people of the land saying, But if thou will give it, I pray thee, hear me. I will give you money for the field. Take it of me and I will bury my dead there. And Ephraim answered Abraham, saying unto him, My Lord, hearken unto me. The land is worth 400 shekels of silver. What is that betwixt me and thee? Bury therefore thy dead. And Abraham hearkened unto Ephraim. And Abraham weighed to Ephraim the silver, which he had named in the audience of the sons of Heth, 400 shekels of silver, current money with the merchant. And the field of Ephraim, which was in Machpelah, which was before Mamre, the field and the cave, which was therein, and all the trees that were in the field, that were in all the borders round about, were made sure unto Abraham for possession in the presence of the children of Heth before all that went in at the gate of his city. And so now, Abraham, Abraham is asking for this land. He's asking for this cave. Um, and Ephraim is like, I'm not going to sell it to you. I'm going to give it to you. You can have it. But Abraham refuses to take it for free. And one thing, we, a well, few principles that we can look at this right off. First of all, if we have the means to do something, we don't want to take advantage of people. Even though he knew that God was promising him the land for his descendants, he didn't even use that. The thing is, is that he was able to pay for it. And oftentimes, if you don't, right? If you don't, if you take something that you don't, especially if you don't even need someone to give you something, but they can come back and renege. They can come back and take it back. They can come back and there could be a dispute over who actually owns it. And so the thing is, is that Abraham was more than able to pay for it. He wanted the price that it cost um, because Ephraim was willing to give him, hey, I'll give you the cave. I'm going to give you the field. I'm going to give it to you for free. You don't have to pay for it. Um, you know, he was honored among them. But at the same time, many believe that um, that it was um, disrespectful if Abraham would have taken it without paying for it. Uh, it is suggested at oftentimes that, that somebody would ask for something far more than what it was worth. Right. And then, you know, assume that the other person is going to kind of haggle with them over it. Right. But if somebody just takes it for free, then oftentimes, you know, there's some resentment. And then the person could come back and say, hey, you know, um, dispute whether or not the, the owner of it truly owns it. But the thing is, is that the first price that was thrown out there, though, many say it was overpriced. We don't know. Right. But the thing is, is that Abraham took that price and paid for it. And he did it in the presence of witnesses so that all would know that he actually purchased this, 
He was going to bury Sarah there and he was going to own it. And the thing is, is that as you look through the words, you see Abraham is also going to be buried there. His son Isaac and um, Rebecca are going to be buried there and his grandson to come, Jacob. Uh, and Leah, his wife, are going to be buried there. So this is something that Abraham is investing in for his family, the burial place for his loved ones. And it was going to be in the land that was promised to his descendants, almost like, hey, we're going to be there too. We're not going to see it in the natural. We're going to be dead when it happens, but we're going to be here. Amen. And so now when we look, <laughs> when we look further down, it says that, um, he paid for it, the 400 shekels of silver, um, and the field of Ephraim, which was in um, uh, Machpelah, which was before Mamre, the field and the cave, which was therein, and all the trees that were in the field, that were in all the borders round about, were made sure Abraham for possession in the presence of the children of Heth. So everybody saw it, everybody witnessed it, and after that, Abraham, it says, buried Sarah, his wife, it tells us in verse 19, in the cave of the field of Machpelah, before Mamre. The same is Hebron in the land of Canaan. So he was in Canaan, the promised land, before it was given to the people, you know, hundreds of years before, you know, because the children of Israel, the, the Jewish nation have not yet been birthed, right? Only Isaac, his son. But Isaac has not had a son. You know, Isaac, you know, it, the, the children of, of the nation of the Jews and the Israelites have not yet been birthed, but this is going to be their land. And Abraham is already going to be there. He's not going to be alive to see it as his descendants obtain it, but he's going to be there. And then verse 20 says, and the field and the cave that is therein were made sure unto Abraham for a possession of a burial place by the sons of Heb. And so, He's making sure he's going to be there. You know, that's something to really kind of think about because, you know, this land that he was really a sojourner in, it, it wasn't, you know, a, his birthplace. He didn't fit in with the people there. These are people that their future generations are going to be driven out of the land. And Abraham's future generations, or descendants are the ones that are going to drive them out, right? But his burial place is there. And so, when you go through these verses of scripture in this chapter, you can just see where some principles are, some things that we should do as people of God, working with and walking in integrity, being honest, not trying to take things for granted or take advantage of other people, but willing uh, to pay for what it is that we desire, what we need when we're able to do things uh, so that it's honest and before witnesses so that we're not accused, so that we are not anticipating or causing any future disputes or arguments. Uh, that we are uh, honoring our family because he's looking at his family, first his wife, but then also this is a burial place that's big enough for his family. And he's looking ahead at the place that is positioned, uh, that this is where his descendants are going to be. And so, Again, we have to remember that everything that we do, we want to do it honestly. We want to do everything heartily as unto the Lord. And so uh, for a memory verse, for a memory verse, we want to look at verse 6. When verse 6 says, hear us, my Lord. Thou art a mighty prince among us. In the choice of our sepulchres, bury thy dead. None of us shall withhold from thee this sepulchre, but that thou mayest bury thy dead. And the reason why this is the memory verse is to remind us the favor that comes when we are in right standing with God. They looked at him as one that they called Lord and a mighty prince amongst them. So that they were given favor. He had favor with them in what it is that he needed and or desired. And they told him, pick the best and nobody's going to stop you. Pick what you truly desire and nobody's going to prevent you. And the thing that we want to remember is that we don't want to be people pleasers. If God be for us, who can be against us? We want to remember that as long as we're walking with God, he supplies all of our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. He is the one 
that gives us the favor that we need. He is the one that opens supernatural doors for us, doors that no man can shut. He is our provider, Jehovah Jireh. Once again, he's showing Abraham that he's the provider, even though Abraham refuses to take for free what he had inquired about and he paid for it. It was still yet God that supplied even the silver that he used to purchase, you know, the cave. And so we have to remember God supplies our needs. The Bible tells us in the book of James that every good and every perfect gift comes from the father of lights from above. Everything that we need, even as we think about being saved, salvation is a gift is given by God. God gives us his Holy Spirit. So we're spiritually alive. You know, God supplies our needs, spiritual, mental, physical, and emotional. He provides for us forgiveness. He has made a way of escape for us so that we don't have to be bound by the enemy. He is the one that destroys the yokes and breaks the chains in our life through his, through his word, by his spirit. And so the things that we need to remember is that God is Jehovah Jireh. Amen. So we're going to close out in prayer. I encourage you to go back and meditate on this because when we go into chapter 24, there's a lot of principles in chapter 24. So I want you to get your hearts and your minds right. Just remember now that God is Jehovah Jireh. But then the next chapter, when we go into it, it's going to show us some principles for life, for accomplishing goals, for fulfilling purposes. What are some of the principles we need to follow in order for us to be able to accomplish what it is that we need to accomplish. That's in our next session of the sit-ups. So we're going to close out in prayer. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell so you're notified when I upload videos. Don't forget to check out our morning prayer if you've not yet done so. And if you need a little help getting motivated to do your spiritual workouts daily, to get motivated to do your spiritual workout, your sit-ups, check out the link below and get your ebook. The e-booklet can be downloaded on your electronic device, your phone, your tablet, your laptop, whatever electronic device you have. It is $2.99. It is a booklet that gives you some insight, some scriptures that is referencing what it is that we are doing. How we need to have a spiritual regimen of prayer, uh, of praise, of uh, studying the word of God. We need to apply it. We need to share this word with others. We need to study and not just do surface the, you know, surface reading, but we need to dig into the word so we can get understanding, so we can be changed from the inside out. So check it out if you so desire, and we're going to close out in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship you. We praise you. We adore you, God. You are the great I am. We magnify your name. We exalt your name together. We thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha, our healer. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You are everything that we need. And so, Father, thank you for your word, for pouring into us that we can pour into others, changing us from the inside out, from core issues, root issues, Lord God. Father, thank you that you are perfecting us and causing us to be the men and the women of God. You purpose and recreated us in Christ Jesus to become. We thank you, praise love and honor you in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. Love you to life. I'll see you the next time on our sit-ups.